All right, Papa Paul Sammy and Allie Bug here. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own medicine cabinet for your garden. Commercial fertilizer deposits salt in the ground that builds up over the years, and you're not doing your dirt, your soil any good. And I'm Samantha from Starkey Farmstead. Obviously, that's my dad. So what <laughs> we're going to be talking to you guys about today is, like my dad said, the most common nutrients are phosphorus, nitrogen, iron, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. If they're the most common nutrients found in soil, they are also the most common nutrient deficiencies found in soil. So today we're gonna to be teaching you how to create your own medicine cabinet of household items and items from your personal yard to keep on standby to correct in each and every one of these nutrient deficiencies. We all know that most synthetic fertilizers are N, P, K, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. But did you know that you have household items and items out of your yard that can provide all the N, P, K that your garden needs? Well, we're gonna show you. Nitrogen, all right, the signs of nitrogen deficiency is yellow leaves, abnormal coloring, red, purple, bronze leaves, and slow growth. And believe me, people, the insects will attack the weakest plant in the garden, quick. Now, nitrogen can come from different things. It can come from worm castings, animal or human urine, comfrey, or coffee grounds. They use coffee grounds, all right? Other than that, it's all right there in your house. Okay, guys, so when we're talking about using animal or human urine, let me make some <coughs> quick side notes for you guys. Number one, please don't use human urine in a garden where you're giving away <coughs> to your neighbors, you're donating, or you're selling them, all right? So there's something called FISMA, Food Safety Moder Modernization Act. And they do have rules about food safety and handling, and urine con usage in the garden, human urine, is highly regulated. So you need to think through that. Another reason we're saying that is if you're on any medications or you have any diseases, that could be a problem for someone that's purchasing your vegetables. So if you wanna use human urine, use it cautiously and use it on vegetables that you intend to eat. The second thing, you can use animal urine. At Sorky Farmstead, we use rabbit urine. Rabbit urine is so very high in nitrogen, guys. It has a lot of micronutrients but nitrogen is, is really what it is known for. It's also a pest deterrent. So using rabbit urine diluted sprayed as a foliar spray around your garden is a quick way to fix a nitrogen deficiency in your plants. Now worm castings. What goes in is what comes out. That's right. So if you're using subpar and just basic crap in your worm bins, well, their crap is going to be subpar. That's so right. what you feed them is what you're going to get out, guys. So when we bat our worms down, my dad and I are very careful to make sure that we are adding in used coffee grounds, comfrey, rabbit manure, because all of those are high in nitrogen. So when our worms eat, ingest the food, digest the food, and then poop the food, their worm poop is higher in nitrogen than what you can get when you look at the bag at, at say Walmart. You go pick up a bag of worm castings and it'll say NPK, one, zero, zero. Let me make a side note for you guys. That's a little unfair because that's a chemical analysis being ran on a biological product. Chemical, biological, they don't match up. So there is a lot of nitrogen that can be found in worm castings that have been created properly. The third thing, comfrey. Now we use a form of comfrey called Bocking 14, Russian Bocking 14. These leaves are dry and we're going to be blending them up for you here in just a second. Now the reason comfrey is on this list as a nitrogen fixer for your garden is it's got a taproot that can go anywhere from six to ten feet straight down into the subsoils of your soil. The next thing would be coffee. 
Now my dad's really more the expert on how you can use coffee grounds in your garden, so dad, take that away. Your coffee grounds have a lot of acid in them until you uh, make coffee. When you make your coffee, it dilutes the acid and it gets great for your plants, uh, or for your feeding your worms or whatever. Uh, you can also use tea, make tea bags. Say, just throw the tea bag and all it. I actually throw my coffee grounds with the filter in my garden. The yeah. filter will deteriorate, and especially in a worm bin. Throw one in there and it's gone in a week. They'll eat it, the filter. All right guys, so what we're gonna show you real quick is how we're gonna use this bullet real fast to blend these comfrey leaves and get them in a powder form. So they are dry. My dad told me he thought they may be a little damp still. That's okay, I think they're dry enough. And if you haven't already figured smell it, it out, I know it smells great, doesn't it? Yeah. We've got urine in a jar. We've got coffee grounds in a jar. And if you notice, we've written coffee grounds and we put the N on there. So N is the elemental sign for nitrogen, okay? so. It's basically when my dad goes into his medicine cabinet for his plants and he's like, I've got a nitrogen deficiency because my plant is too small. The leaves are bronze and well, it's being attacked by bugs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some nitrogen fixers for that plant. He's got all of his jars labeled with what it is and what it can be used. fixing to get that. Not all of it. You got to put it in your jar, Pops. Oh. He's trying to break his own rules here, guys. Yeah, I like the smell of that. So mm. you just blend your, your dried coffee, I mean, your dried comfrey leaves up, okay? Get them in your jar and set them in your plant medicine cabinet. Now, the greatest thing about the comfrey is, like the coffee grounds and the urine, it's just simply not going to be bad. Um, and now that it's blended up and ready, when you need to use this comfrey, you can take a tablespoon or two out of here, put it in a bucket of water, stir it up, let it dissolve, and you can pour that around the root zones of your plants. Or, or you can strain it through like a knee-high stocking and put it in a two-gallon sprayer and do a foliar spray with it. So now we're moving on to phosphorus. Now, phosphorus would be the P on NPK when you're looking at a synthetic fertilizer bag. Now, phosphorus is really important in the sense that it's gonna help the plant harvest the sun, in, sun's energy and convert that into growth and reproduction. So, when you have any kind of phosphorus deficiency, there's a couple of things you're gonna notice. Really small leaves. You're gonna notice that your leaves are super dark green, dull, or like a blue green, right? So they're gonna be kind of off colored. And overall, the plant is just going to be weak. Uh, you're not gonna get a lot of good fruit quality off of a plant that is nutrient deficient in phosphorus. So when you have that, that's a problem. For a lot of people, you're never going to have a problem with a phosphorus deficiency, guys. The studies show that most soils that become phosphorus deficient get a lot of rainfall and they're clay-based. So if you're like Papa Alsamy and I and you're in a coastal state like Southeast Louisiana, we have a lot of rainfall and we have clay soil. So phosphorus can be an issue for us, but say if you live in Arizona, you probably should be good. Now, pretty much, Papa and I were just talking about this. The only real phosphorus easy to get my hands on, easy to store, homemade fertilizers that we can get a hold to would be comfrey. So comfrey again with that six foot tap root goes really deep and it mines for, for nutrients that you otherwise wouldn't have in your top layers of soil. Something else that you can use for phosphorus would be um, a bone meal. And Papa Sammy's gonna be making some bone meal for us here next week and doing a video on that so please make sure to like comment and subscribe hit that notification bell 
so you'll catch that video when it comes out. So Comfrey, in my opinion, is the easiest to store, easiest to make, phosphorus, homemade, nutrient, fertilizer that you can get, guys. So, and here's the tip about Comfrey real quick. We're in June. So if you go ahead and you order your root cuttings from somebody that has Comfrey right now, and you get them in the soil, even in the next week or two, what'll happen is by, say, three or four weeks after you plant that root, you're going to have leaves. It's a very quick growing plant and you can use it immediately. Like once you get it in the ground, you pretty much can't kill it. So get your comfrey ordered. Do not order seeds, order root cuttings. That's the best advice I can give you guys. There. All right, so the next major nutrient deficiency people find in their vegetable gardens is going to be potassium, which is the K on the NPK on your synthetic fertilizers. Now, the reason why your plant really needs potassium, folks, is it's gonna help move water and nutrients from the roots to the leaves. Now, it's also gonna help your plant harvest the energy from the sun, basically photosynthesis. Now, if your plant has a deficiency in potassium, you're gonna know because you're gonna get yellow leaves the leaf edges are going to turn brown and begin to curl up. They can even become brittle. The next thing is you're gonna have poor flowering. And what I mean is you may have this big, beautiful tomato plant and only four flowers on a four foot tomato plant. And then if you're lucky enough that those four, plow four flowers actually get pollinated, you're gonna have poor setting of fruit. So potassium is super important for your plants it's also very important for you. So dad, what are some home remedies, things from your inside of your house and your yard that you might can use to fix that? Okay, to specify, when we did this, or do it while we're doing this, we're trying to use stuff that's easy to find. I mean, banana peelings, everybody eats bananas, I think. But banana peelings, even when they're dry. Now, we tell them how you dried those, though. This is kind of oh. cool. I, I, oh yeah. Well, yeah, you dried them, and I'll slip that video real quick in here so you guys can watch it. Go ahead. This is my homemade high-tech dehydrator. Okay, so what are these right here? That's my banana peelings. That's uh, phosphorus, calcium, and more or less different little uh, trace elements and all. And the garlic onions help move the insects and stuff out of your garden. You just cut okay, now e even if you dry these, really dry and put them in that blender what happens is they got long fibers in there and it'll just tangle up on the blender blade so he, always even if they dry and you're going to blend them or you're going to make a tea you just cut them up little pieces in, in just plain water and let, let it soak and over a period of time Wait, how long are you going to let them soak oh well, i'd let them soak a week or 10 days i really would now you so can seven use seven to ten days. Yeah, you can use them uh, two or three days later, but the longer, the stronger. The longer, now, the stronger. Oh yeah. Uh, now this country might be a little hard to come by, and we're not listing everything. We're just trying to give people an idea to how to help their garden without going overboard with expenses. Bananas, loaded. Throw it around your rose bushes and watch it. Your rabbit manure is a coal manure that will not burn your plants. Chicken, horse, cows will burn your plants. Rabbit manure, take it straight from the rabbit to the garden, it won't hurt. It's okay, perfect. Okay, so here's a question people ask. Do you need to compost rabbit manure? No. No, okay, and I tell people that all the time, like you said, from the butt to the garden. Now, Dad, um, which manure would you say is better, chicken or rabbit? Oh, Lord, rabbit, but your chicken will burn your garden. Right, but it's, rabbit manure is the highest livestock manure in the world, guys, when it comes to NPK. And I'd like you guys to check the facts on that. I'm dead serious. You're going to find a higher level of NPK in rabbit manure than you will in chicken. I and, know. And the thing is, people, you, you little goes a long way. It, just like any fertilizer, just don't go out there and, and, and trench it or, or drown it because it might kill it. Start off lightly and increase as you need. Uh, this is strictly a tutorial to help you get started 
on how to protect, protect your garden. Right, and we're also trying to give you guys ideas of things that you can go ahead and get set up, get labeled, and find a place in your shop or even your kitchen where you can store these things so that when you notice it, you're not then running out trying to find banana pills and make banana tea. If you need potassium in a, a tea form today, you had better make it four to six weeks ago, guys, or it's not, it's not available to you today. You're gonna have to spend money. So we're hoping you're gonna take all of this knowledge and make you some teas. And you know, like my dad did, cut up some banana stick it in water, set it on the shelf, that's it. It's all, it's all you've got to do. And then when you're ready to use it, you strain the bananas out and the juice in here is what you're going to use as either a foliar spray or a drencher for around your roots. That's right. Okay guys, the next most common plant nutrient deficiency is iron. Now, the reason your plant needs iron is it's going to help carry nutrients and oxygen through the plant very similar to what it does in the human body. Now, if your plant is deficient in iron, you're gonna see that your younger leaves are yellow. The plant is gonna be stunted. It's not gonna to wanna to grow, but the coolest thing is where the flowering is supposed to happen, like where your flower is, and now that's gonna turn into a fruit or a vegetable, it dies. It's got necrosis. What? So iron is so important, so my dad, has the easiest way to, to help you correct that nutrient deficiency. Go for it, Pops. I use, look, anything with rust. Horseshoes, uh, old tools, rusty nails. Get this one. It, it, just soak it in water. Yeah, and, so and, you get a bucket? Like yeah, that. a bucket of water and let it soak. Just throw them in. right there? That comfrey? Yeah. yeah, look at this guy. So you literally, what he's saying is he wants you to do this. That's right. Maybe, uh -oh, not that. maybe not that. <laughs> and you just put water up to here. And let it sit. I did this when I first started gardening a year and a half ago. And I let it sit in a five gallon bucket. And within a day, the water was rusty red. And then you just pour that water around the root zone of your plants and bam, no more deficiency. All right, years ago, a friend of mine had a pear tree that was not bearing a big tree. Uh, an old fella came by and said, the tree needs iron. He drove three or four rusty nails in the trunk of that tree. The next year, they were throwing pears in the garbage to get them out the yard. So rust is, is critical to a plant. Now, do not use galvanize. Galvanize is sink. It's extremely toxic. Make sure it's black, uncoated iron. Or either a black, uncoated nail. Otherwise, you could do more harm than, than good. Right, then you're putting toxicity into your soil. That's right. Which will be absorbed into your plant. That's right. Which is why we are really encouraging you guys to watch all the way through this video to learn how to organically correct your nutrient deficiencies because everything you're putting on that plant is gonna make its way into the food that it's producing, <laughs> which is gonna make its way into your body when you eat it. You are what you eat. That's right, and here again, <laughs> This is an outline to help you get started on your garden's medicine box. Uh, different strokes, different parts of the country. Like she said, along the Gulf Coast, Louisiana, a lot of rain, clay. You might not have that problem. But I mean, you can adjust, you're getting an idea. This is what this is all about. Thinking outside the box, using what you already have in your hands. That's right. All right, folks, moving right along. Calcium, all right. so. Your plant needs calcium because calcium is going to strengthen cell walls. And a plant that is deficient in calcium is more likely to be attacked by disease. So having enough calcium is going to help your plant become resistant to de diseases and funguses, mildews, all of those things that we just cringe when we see it in our garden. Um, calcium will help activate enzymes in the plant and it will also keep the pH levels balanced. So it's a very important nutrient. Seeing most is people having blossom end rot in their tomatoes. And I know some people say you can't have it in squash, but I'm gonna tell you that you can because I had it last year. Um, and it's a big deal when you've worked really hard and your, 
you're waiting on those tomatoes, you see your first little tiny green tomatoes, you walk out there and all of a sudden, there's this tremendous black dot on the bottom of it because that area is now dying. That is a symptom that your plant is calcium deficient. It can also be a symptom that your plant's not quite getting enough water. But let's stick with the calcium. So dad, if I see that nasty little black dot going on on the bottom of my tomato, me, myself, I run out to the garden, to the rabbit tree, I collect some rabbit urine, I dilute it, and I pour it around the root zone of my plant and I do a foliar spray. But for people who don't have rabbits at their disposal, what would you do just grabbing household items? What would you use? Eggshells to start with. You can put, personally, when we cook eggs, I put it in my French dehydrator here. Set it out in the sun coon and you dry it. Huh? Your coon butt dehydrator. That's right. And I put it, I dry these. Now, I throw this as is in my garden. Then, that's long release, long time release. Then you put them in the blender. And when you blend them, it depends on what you want. You can powder them down to a total powder. And that is a quick release. You can release, this will release quicker than a whole shell will. All right, now here's the trick, people. You gotta dry them. If you don't dry them, you're taking a real good chance. Oh, that bacteria. Yeah, the bacteria. Um, I just read something on that, that yeah. if you don't dry your- Eggshells, I, I wouldn't put it in my garden. That's why I put them in this, set it out in the sun, let the sun have it. Six or eight hours, they dry. Okay, now, about that. now this, extremely quick release powdered milk you can dissolve powdered milk in a solution of water pour it around your plants and you're talking about almost instant pickup it'll take it right on up the plant so you got quick you know, fairly fast or the whole shell that that is a long-term release moving right along magnesium so i had this problem in my garden here recently I noticed that my oldest leaves on my plant were turning yellow. And then what I noticed was that there was this weird, like, dark green on the outside, but like this lighter, like, vein, you know, it was like pronounced. And so I began to do a little bit of research. It also had some brown spots inside the leaves that were beginning to die and hollow out. So it'd be like a hole in the middle of this weird colored leaf. And what I realized was that I had a deficiency in magnesium. Now, the most common plants for this to happen to are tomatoes, grapevines, blueberries, squash, and uh, raspberries and roses. So it's not an uncommon thing, and it's actually one of the easiest and fastest things that you can fix because your plant is going to need magnesium. Without it, you're gonna have a you're gonna have trouble with the whole photosynthesis thing. Like your plant is unable to harness the sun and turn that into energy, okay? It's also gonna be a much smaller plant. Like when I noticed it with my squash plants, my squash plants were this big instead of this big. So it was pretty obvious the plant was seriously stunted. Now, my dad's going to show you a very fast, quick on, quick fix on the magnesium issue. Epsom salt. It's, um, it, it, it's extremely fast. It occurs in nature. It has not been processed. You can take Epsom salt and you can put it in a... Uh, the reason we have this big one is she has a tremendous garden, quarter, quarter acre, acre, and I have a garden. So we use a lot of this. But on the average person, that's that you, should last you oh my gosh, an yeah. entire grow season, yeah. guys, for our tools are for. And what I did was I mixed three tablespoons into about one gallon. Uh, no, it's like a half a gallon. Three tablespoons and like a half a gallon. And I poured that. So just as a review before we go any further, we have our eggshells, our bananas, our coffee grounds, our urine, our comfrey, and now our Epsom salt. And so far, we are able, with just these products, able to fix 
numerous common nutrient deficiencies in your garden. And you guys are watching us just sit here and like pull them out of the thin air, but. People, this is what we use. But if you research and you need, like you don't have Epsom salts, I'm sure you can come up with a, with a substitute. It's like my old grandfather said, don't sit there and look at it, get up and do something, and you'll be surprised what you can do once you start. That's it. A problem, there is no problem in the world that doesn't have a solution, guys. Right? My dad used to tell me that all the time when I was growing up. Pumpkins, stop getting upset, stop getting frustrated. If there is a problem, then there must be a solution because we live in an orderly world. If there is up, then there is down. If it's hot, there is cold. If, if there's an in, there must be an out. That's right. So if there is a problem, guys, guarantee you there yeah, is a solution. Yeah, get up and take care of it. So thanks, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon with my dad and I. It means a lot to us, and obviously, we have a lot of fun doing it. Well, actually, to finish it up, this is my medicine cabinet for my plants. I got vinegar. I got bacon soap. I got borax, Epsom salt, vegetable oil, ammonia, and, and all my little hydrogen peroxide. The uh, Don liquid soap from our soap water. That is my medicine cabinet for my garden. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And to root my plants, I have my root starter. I have cinnamon. I misplaced my cinnamon. I have cinnamon because it is also a root starter. Cinnamon, aspirin, onion. It, it's really a, a stimulates the heck out of your roots.